Welcome back to Breast of Campus. Insights which Rabbi Nachman brings about closeness to an item which is very holy. Rabbi Nachman brings an example in the Kutim 1, Lesson 17, regarding the incident of Avram Avinu buying the cave of Machpelah, Mrat Machpelah, from Ephron, the Chiti who lived in Hebron. And the Midrash and the Zohar relate that how did Avram Avinu come across this cave? It's that when he was serving the three angels who came to visit him, meet the tongue, the tongue of the cow. So one of them slipped and ran away. And Avram Avinu went chasing after that animal. And the animal kept on running and running until it entered this cave. And Avram Avinu followed into this cave. And the Zohar and the Gemara and the Midrash, they relate that he went inside the cave and he actually saw Adam and Eve, Adam and Chava, who were buried, by the way, in the Machpelah cave also, lying there. And it says also that as soon as Avram Avinu went in, he smelt the sweet, amazing fragrance of Gan Eden when walking in there, into the cave. So he left the cave, he caught the animal, he brought it back because he had the guests waiting. But he maintained a strong connection with that cave with the intent that he would like for him and his wife, Sarah, to eventually be buried there in Marat Machpelah. So it says in Parshat Chayi Sarah, that when eventually Sarah, our, our, our ancestor, our mother, Sarah, passed away, that Avram Avinu purchased this cave from Ephron. And the Zohar says that Ephron, the Chiti, was so anxious and so happy to finally get rid of this cave. It says in the Zohar that Ephron sold this cave to Avram Avinu with such joy. And why? Rabbi Nachman points out why. That Ephron, he couldn't see that it was the entrance to Gan Eden. The, uh, the, the Midrash in the Zohar says that as soon as Avram Avinu walked in, he smelled the fragrance of Gan Eden, recognizing that this is the Sha'ar, the Petach, the entrance to Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden. So that's why he wanted so badly to buy it. Ephron didn't see a thing about this. Lozo Afzu. That's an expression in the, in the Gemara. That not, not only did he, did he not see the light, the holiness emanating from this cave, but he saw it as dark and ugly and miserable. He was so anxious to get rid of it. So the Zora says, like we said, that Ephron sold it with such joy. So Rabbi Nachman points out, take, points out, take a look. Two individuals, Avram Avinu and Ephron, observing the same item, the cave of Machpelah. One sees it as the entrance to Gan Eden. He sees the light. And Ephron looks at the exact same item with disdain, with disgust, just to get rid of it. How could it be? The same item, two people are seeing it in totally different perspectives. And this is what Rabbi Nachman teaches. That this explains why you have items of such holiness some people get turned on and they see the light and the holiness of the item and others eh, they're, they're not they're turned they're not turned on they're turned off they're not impressed how could it be he explains in that lesson it's the person themselves. avram avinu obviously was a very holy person so his holiness earned him the ability to see the light in this entrance of the cave of machpelah that it's the entrance of gan eden and to feel it and to experience it but Ephron, due to his deeds, that he was from a low class of people spiritually, meaning that it was ingrained in him, in his DNA, if you want to call it, or in his actions, that he wasn't the holiest and best person. So the item of holiness, not only did it not shine, but it, it emitted even more darkness. And Rabbi Nachman uses this example to apply throughout life. You have items of extreme holiness, people get turned on, and other people get extremely turned off, even though the item is really holy. And sometimes you can use as a barometer measure that the way people get turned off and disgusted by items, which should be holy, comes to show how much holiness is possibly hidden here. And it's the person's prescription which is blackened and darkened that they can't see the value of this item. So from here you see Rabbi Nachman teaches a major point in humility. When you begin to see a flaw in an item, 
you got to check. Maybe I am the flaw here. I have the problem with my eyes that I can't see the shiningness and the brightness of this situation.